What's going on friends? One of the most important parts of your Harley Davidson motorcycle is often the most neglected and overlooked. The suspension on your motorcycle affects everything from acceleration to braking and to handling. Having the right suspension on your motorcycle is the best money you'll ever spend. Having a worn out or even really a stock suspension and it's not working right, this can pretty much make everything else on your bike, well, pretty much trash. Handlebars, seats, exhaust systems, this is always the first thing to fly off the shelf when it comes to a Harley motorcycle. It's the first thing you notice about your bike, and it's also the first thing that pretty much everybody else notices about your bike. Next, everybody wants more power. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with more power, and more power can really make up for a lot of shortcomings on a motorcycle. But Harley-Davidson has really never been known for super high quality suspension systems on their motorcycles. But in 2016 and 2017, Harley-Davidson really stepped up their game with the stock suspension. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Harley-Davidson factory suspension is actually supplied by Showa. And in 2017, Harley-Davidson's touring models actually got the Showa forks with the dual bending valve technology and out back they got the Showa Emulsion Technology shocks. Now Sportsters and Dynas received new suspension from Showa in 2016. Now the rear suspension was really only on select Dyna models and sadly well the soft tails, the twin cam soft tails really never got a suspension upgrade since they were kind of at the end of their run which obviously as we know ended in 2018 but in 2018 when the new Milwaukee 8 soft tail came out they had the cartridge front end and the emulsion rear suspension. The new emulsion shocks were a huge improvement over the air suspension on the touring bikes. The air suspension over time tended to leak and even if you let your bike sit for a couple of weeks or something you had to come out, air your suspension back up. With the air suspension you really had to stay on top of it to keep it at the proper pressure. With the new emulsion suspension on the touring bikes this is just a set it and forget it unless your load changes on your bike and then if your load changes you can simply readjust the suspension with the turn of a knob. Well, the issue with factory suspension on any Harley is that that suspension has to fit a wide variety of riders of all heights, all weights, and different varying loads on the bike and everything there in between. So your factory suspension really is nothing but one giant compromise. The springs in the front end of your factory suspension, these are progressive rate springs and there's absolutely zero adjustment to them but they do have the dual bending valve technology, which uses dual valves to basically generate the rebound and dampening force. The factory progressive rate springs have multiple tensions. They have to be light enough on top to feel responsive enough for lighter riders, but down at the bottom, they have to be stiff enough and heavy enough to where heavier riders aren't actually bottoming out with them. Now with the factory springs being lighter on top and heavier on bottom, you have this wide crossover point in the middle, which is basically the progressive rate, and you know it's there when you hit your brakes and you experience that wonderful heavy front end dive that we all get with the factory front suspension on a Harley. Out back on the rear suspension, you do have adjustable preload, which is nice to compensate for different loads on the motorcycle, but that's absolutely all you have. Now on the touring bikes and the newer soft tails, this is adjustable with the knob, and if you have a Sportster or a Dyna, you're going to have to have a tool to adjust your preload. Your rear factory shock contains a cartridge with oil and gas mixture. This oil and gas mixture is actually forced through two small holes, which is basically the valving. This is what controls your rebound and compression dampening. Now you do have adjustment for the preload, as I mentioned, but there is no adjustment for the rebound and compression. So pretty much what you get is what you have to live with there. Now here's the issue with the factory rear suspension is the fact that the more time you spend on the bike, oil and air begin to mix, it emulsifies, and this really reduces the shock's hydraulic efficiency. This is when cavitation begins to occur, and then you really start to lose all your hydraulic dampening, and the longer you spend on the bike, the nastier the ride gets. Suspension is not cheap, but I have never heard anybody go out and spend a bunch of money on suspension and regret it. I guess really the only downside to putting suspension on your motorcycle is the cost of it. It really is very hard to convince yourself or somebody else to go out and spend that money on suspension if you haven't actually ridden a bike that has an upgraded suspension on it. 
because once you've ridden a bike with upgraded suspension, there's really no question left and it just becomes a take my money affair. There is absolutely nothing like having a suspension that is tailored to your weight and riding style. And the best part is it doesn't even have to be ridiculously customized to make a huge difference on your bike. At a bare minimum, just getting a better set of springs in your front forks, this will greatly improve your comfort and also reduce a lot of that horrible front end dive under braking that we all experience. Front spring kits can actually be tailored to the ride height that you want and also the weight of yourself and any other weight that you add to the bike additionally. Now, you can take that a step further with a complete cartridge kit. A complete cartridge kit can allow you full control over your compression settings, your rebound, and even your preload. That's exactly how you have full control over your front suspension settings, and you can literally dial it in and tailor it to your liking. Now, for the rear suspension, there's a lot of different shock options out there. Now, you can get a higher quality shock than what came from the factory, but some of those higher quality shocks, yes, they do have better internals, but you're still limited to just preload adjustment only. You don't have any rebound or dampening control. A better option is to spend a little bit more money and go ahead and get a shock that has rebound and compression adjustments in addition to basically the standard preload adjustment. Now Outback, if you really want to get into a good set of rear shocks, there are the piggyback reservoir shocks and even better, the remote reservoir shocks. This style of shocks actually really helps prevent that oil and air mixture and that emulsifying and that cavitation and that loss of hydraulic control that I mentioned earlier. Now, we all know the big names in suspension from Legends to Fox to Olean's to Progressive, but there are a lot of other quality manufacturers out there that still make a really good high quality product. It's no doubt you can get a high quality setup from any of the big name shock brands. It just really depends how much money you want to spend. But if you want a really good deal on a complete suspension package, check out DK Customs. They have put together some awesome suspension packages and the best part is they're not stupid expensive. I've been looking at revamping the suspension front and rear on my personal bike, so I've been in the market doing some shopping myself and so far DK Customs is about one of the best setups that I've come across and not only that they've tested all these combinations and wrote a full report about it. Now I want to be clear that I am not sponsored by DK Customs in any way I'm just doing my personal shopping for my personal motorcycle and I've really been checking out their suspension packages I like the reports that they've wrote I like the combinations that they put together and not to mention if you go to order a set of suspension from them they have quite the lengthy questionnaire about your motorcycle, your weight, what you're doing with it, how much you plan to carry on it, how long do you plan to carry that, what percentage of time do you do this with it or that with it under this load. They really want to make sure they get you the absolute correct suspension setup for what you're looking to do with your motorcycle. We're talking from DK Customs, a fully adjustable front cartridge kit, fully adjustable rear shocks, all tailored to the setup with the information that you provide for right around 1600 bucks. I haven't been able to find that kind of deal anywhere else out there. I really like their suspension packages because it's not a one size fits all. They have several different setups, but through the questionnaire, this helps determine exactly what you need for your bike. And I like that because I can put in all my information and get exactly what I need without getting a nasty surprise after I do all the work of putting it all together. And not to mention it comes with a detailed set of instructions, so pair that with your shop manual, the job will be a snap to get done. You get the right suspension set up for the riding that you do, you will not regret it. I, as I mentioned, suspension, I have never had anybody spend a bunch of money on it and then regret it. Sometimes with engine kits, sometimes with cams, there's always that, well, I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have done that, but never with suspension. Now guys, I would even argue that a full suspension setup on your motorcycle is more worth the money than doing cams and big bore kits and all kinds of hot rod upgrades. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're actually able to ride your bike and not have to get out of the throttle, that suspension is gonna make it worth every penny. So when you're upgrading your Harley Davidson, it's completely up to you what direction you want to go in. If you want to get the engine all done up first, there's nothing wrong with that, but don't forget about your suspension later on down the road. You might even take a different route and leave the motor alone for now and go ahead and get the suspension done. 
I guarantee you, you won't regret spending the money. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope I really gave you some things to think about regarding your suspension and turned you on to some good upgrades out there. Now, as I mentioned, 2017 Endura suspension on touring bikes isn't all that bad, but it could be a lot better. Now, not to mention the new Softails, 2016 Endura Sportsters, it's all a lot better than it used to be. But anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.